Welcome back, everybody, to the Take Two Podcast. I am joined by an actor extraordinaire, Mr. Alan Emery's. Alan, what's up, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Okay, so I have to be honest with you. Uh, our YouTube channel is just getting hot and heavy, and we are honored to have you on here, kind of helping launch this for us. Uh, the podcast it, as well. Yeah, it, it, it's so cool. One lady we just had a couple of weeks ago was our first ever international uh, recording of any kind, and she also is in London, which is where you're at. So, oh, wicked! You're bringing Who is it you're interviewing? Georgina Castle was her name, uh, or ah. still is her name, I should say. Yeah, she was lovely. She's a great actress. She's uh, with COVID. She's had to switch into more teaching now, just doing like virtual audition teaching and things like that. Um, but you, sir, actually have some things coming out, and you've got to keep on working. And, and I wanted to chat with you about that. First thing I want to talk about. I'm not into the horror. That's my co-host Tony. That's his deal. He loves the horror movies. He loves the scary. But mm -hmm. you were you were in host, and I personally yeah. watched it last night. I'm extremely <laughs> upset with you right now because I had to watch that. But uh, what a wild Sorry. ride! But no, it's always not your fault. What a wild ride! What a crazy film! Uh, what was that like? What was that whole process like making host? That was bizarre, and also, but in a brilliant way. And I also kind of feel this. I've been asked about it a few times, and I kind of feel a bit like an imposter talking about it because obviously I've got uh, it's more of a cameo role for me because I was home um Radina my my partner is the, the one of the stars of the show um and most of my most of my input to that film was um staying out of the way as much as I possibly could and like hiding in the bedroom while they were filming in the living room I think at one point I had to no no I think I did at one point, I had to go across the road and sit in the park for like three hours. Oh, geez. Um, because they need, and they, the weird thing is, I didn't have anything with me, just on my own, because I wasn't allowed my phone, because they needed my phone, because there's a scene in the film where they call my phone and find my phone is on, like, in the bedroom. Oh, man. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't listen to music. I didn't, I wasn't able to go on Facebook to call my mom or anything like that. I was just sitting in the park, like, twiddling my thumbs. And obviously no one can contact me to say, come back in, we finished filming. So Radina has to come outside and come pick me up from the park, which was Jeez. bizarre, but it's an amazing <laughs> film. Very 1980s of you. How very, uh -huh. just, just out of touch. Um, so uh, the concept is brilliant. I thought the concept was very cool. It was kind of like, let's make the best of the scenario that we have in our world right now. And mm -hmm. I thought it was really well done, really smart, you know, just, and also you didn't, they didn't try and do too much with it. You know, the thing is under an hour uh, runtime, but you know, uh, so I, I thought it was really good. So that's really cool that you were involved with that. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that, that all comes down to Jed and Rob. They're like uh, brilliant nice. uh, director, producer combo. Um, I think they've just signed a deal now with uh, Bloom House Productions. So like oh, really? a deal from that, which is incredible. Um, and yeah, like it really did just it's kind of like our generation's Blair Witch. Like when the Blair Witch came out, it was when we were all just starting to, you know, have cameras and being really uh, on on the internet and filming everything. And that was like the beginning of like found footage films. And I think they've really found like this new interesting way of doing it, of the Zoom call. And like mm. you say, it's just under an hour, which is the length of a Zoom call. Which I yeah right. yeah it's it's it, it's a great way of going. What are our what our restrictions are and then playing within those restrictions and making something from it very cool amazing you're in london right now and you brought up Blair witch which was filmed 15 minutes from my house from where i live in maryland really yeah 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 Burkittsville, maryland man. right up the street Burkittsville, maryland and of course when that came out everybody wanted to go and venture and it, it actually got too crowded when people went there when it came out so it stopped it wasn't as scary because people were like oh i gotta go check out this area so you're just walking around with other people at the time um but it's oh, right there man. you can go and you can walk through the woods and all that kind of good stuff it's awesome Okay. Oh, when, I was, when, when it came out, I was all like, everyone wanted to, everyone thought it was, there was that rumor that, oh, it's a real thing it actually happened. They found this and it's just like, yeah, it's mad. It's incredible that these things happen with stories. So very smart. All right. So host, you're, you're also on Netflix right now with Young Willander, uh, about six episodes there. How did that come about? How did this come across your table? Um, so I got, uh, basically just like the, the, the standard way that a working class sort of jobbing actor gets a job. Um, I got sent uh, an audition, like my agent uh, called me and said, I've got you on audition with Sophie Holland for uh, a show called Young Wallander. And like, I'll be honest, I had no idea what Wallander was up until that point. Um, and then I went in, I auditioned, um, 
Selfie was like, look, I like what you're doing, but I, I, it's more this kind of show. There's, uh, there's less, um, it's, it's less dramatic. It's a bit more uh, understated kind of play. Um, so it was, it was a really nice sort of um, collaborative process between me and the, um, the, the casting director, Sophie. And then, yeah, and then I got a phone call saying that the director wants to meet you and we're going to do a, like a, a Skype phone call meeting with him. Um, had a bit of a chat and then found out I got the job and was over the moon because it was my first big gig. Nice. Um, and then turned up on set and was like the new kid on the block, which was incredibly daunting at first. And then, yeah, it, it was like being a bit of a, going from pouring pints and making cocktails to staying in a five-star hotel and playing more the, the, like the lead protagonist in a Netflix series. It, it was incredible and just a whole new experience for me. So cool. Very cool. Now, so tell me about the difference with, you know, being just a film, you have the one director, maybe the one AD, that's it you're dealing with. With this, were there different directors per episode? No, there was two directors. So we had, okay. first block had uh, one director and the second block had another director. And we had um, Ule and Jens. Ule was like this Swedish Viking leather jacket wearing badass. Okay. Um, and then... Yeah, and then the next director was just really in depth with wanting to explore the characters and their relationships and and very sort of artistic and flowy. So it was a really interesting mix of having that sort of like the superstar of Sweden of directing. Wow. Um, not not that he wasn't uh, an amazing artistic director, but it's just a very different style. He just em he's emulated coolness. Nice. Um, and then Jens was just this lovely, bubbly, cuddly, really visionary kind of wanting to go into the depth of, yeah, but what does this, what is the backstory behind all of this uh, um, subtext, which was, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a different experience for me as well. I have the two directors, both coming at it from different styles um, and, and getting brilliant results in different ways. Very cool. Wow. That's really awesome. And that's, that's good. Did they, was there ever a, a instance where one might've wanted you to go one way or the other, the other way, or did they just kind of work together? No, they were quite good in the sense that like, there's this thing, they weren't overbearing and controlling as oh. directors. They were very much collaborative and wanted to, like we were hired from our, uh, our calls with, um, with Ule. So I, I think they just assumed, they knew that what we kind of knew what we wanted to do and they, we had a similar vision for ourselves as well. So they, they, yeah, they, they, they gave us some boundaries to play within, but then just let us play, which was, which is the best thing for an actor to have be told, here's your framework, do whatever you want within it. Wow. Very cool. That's nice. That, that sounds like that's a good working environment. Uh, that you're yeah, yeah great fun. Uh, Cold Blow Lane, I think that's out recently. Yeah, yeah I, I, that was a bit of a, again, that was a small one. That was just something that's kind of, um, I, I, a lot of my jobs, a lot of these things I've been doing, I kind of just, I, I get asked a lot, like, how do you do it? How do you get that job? How do you do this? And I feel like I, I fall into a lot of them. Like, mm -hmm. they just kind of mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I, I don't, uh, and it's, I kind of have to, because for the first like year of leaving drama school, and even even whilst I did Cold Blow Lane, I had like a small role in that as well. Okay. Um, I, it was a bit of um, a constant worry of how am I going to get my next job? How do I get the next job? How do I get a job? How am I going to get hired? Does that? Why didn't I get that job? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I get that? And then I kind of let go of it from listening to Brian Cranston talking about it's not your job to get the job. Um, it's just your job to give them an option of how you would like to play the character and then they can choose whether or not you do it that way. And wow. it frees you a lot because you're not constantly worried about getting the job or I didn't get the job, so therefore I'm a failure. It's just, I'm an actor and I like to tell stories. So, I mean, I tell a story in an alleyway, as long as it's a good story, I'll tell it. Nice. Um, so yeah, like it just kind of, and I feel like if you do that, you're, you're naturally going to nurture creative relationships 
And therefore, if you're nurturing creative relationships, you're going to create more work with more people. So yeah. it's just, it's, it's kind of a bit of an organic thing that happens. I mean, obviously you have to be ambitious and trying to work and trying to, and think of things from, um, from a business point of view, but there's an element of it that I feel that's why actors have agents mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because yeah. we're, we're the creative, we're the, we're the, I don't know, the, the tornado or the, or the calm breeze that is, is, is happening and someone is directing it in a direction that will be able to do the right things at the right time. And uh, you kind of, once you accept that, like as an actor, you might not ever work. Like I've, I've accepted that post Wallander, I might never work again. It oh, could yeah. happen. I don't know. Um, but then there's that, but then again, I still want to win an Oscar in the next 11 years. That's my goal. That's my ambition. Okay. But I have to kind of hold on tight to it whilst also letting it go. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a freeing, but then it's an accepting at the same time. I like it. And it, yeah. it all comes out. It, it seems to be working well for you. I've been following you on your socials and you got a lot of great stuff pushing and going on. Uh, Tony and I do a Oscars preview. We, we are badly in love with the Oscars uh, ourselves. And we do a whole preview episode and then a post view episode. My family has a, a humongous Oscar party every year, which everyone's oh, like, wow. you guys have a big, the whole fam comes together, big blah. So I look forward to the day when we're doing our preview up of talking about, you know, possible best actor winner, Alan Emmerich. We're like, we know that guy. He was on our show. Oh, that'd be so before. cool. That'd be wild. And, and actually, I'm going to make sure that you have to come back on at that point and talk to us. Oh, hell yeah. Um, all right, London. You're over in London. My family and I just vacated there just last year. Really? We went, uh, yep. My wife, two kids. We went, uh, daughter was 11. Son was only two at the time. Uh, but we, my wife and I honeymooned in Ireland and Italy moons ago. And we thought we would never travel the world. Once we set foot, we were just like, we're doing this again. So immediately mm -hmm. we set, set our plans out to get to check off London. That was next on the list. Uh, fell madly in love with the place. We were there for four days. Uh, five days, four nights, and we felt like we didn't scratch the service. Like we never even left the city, to be honest with you. And we we missed out on so much more, especially like outside in, in actual England, mm -hmm. what have you. Um, my daughter attempted to break the record for most fish and chips eaten in one trip. I don't How know well what it, you do. <laughs> I, I don't know what the record was, but she's got to be in the runnings because every meal All we right. had, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so she had her little her little uh, iPhone thing, and she was keeping a little a tally of which pubs mm -hmm. had the best. And she still has she, she I forget which one she ranks number one overall, but she ranks. You have to like, send it to me because I okay. I come from a seaside town, so I'm a big like London fish and chips. Don't cut it for me. Okay, okay, they're not good so, enough. So when we come back, which will happen, where where am I aiming to go? What what section? Wales. Go to Wales. Okay. You have to go to Wales. Wales is like, so the instant, historically, England never existed until the Romans came. Okay. Um, so it, originally, England was just Cornwall, and that was it. Um, and the rest of the country was Wales and Scotland uh, for the Celtic uh, period of time. Um, and then obviously through like history and different kings and different invaders and different like coll collaborations between different people, we've now got Wales, Scotland, and England done. Um, yeah, Wales is just, it's a phenomenal place. It's full of sort of, it's like the original people of the UK, like the Scots and the Welsh. So there's lots of Celtic stories and myths and legend, like Merlin comes mm. from Wales. It's uh, Emrys Merlin is like from the Mabinogion, which is a, a collection of like stories told throughout a thousand years. And um, it's all, it's all about, like there's a great story that I was told as a kid that, um, that mountains are just sleeping dragons because people don't believe in them anymore. And once people believe in dragons and magic again, they'll wake up. So oh, it's all that kind of stuff in Wales. And the, the like pixies and imps and all that are all very much like, oh, don't, don't go up on that mountain at that time of night because you know the pixies are around and they'll do this to you. And so there's That's lots so cool. of that going on. It's just a beautiful place. And especially okay. if you've got kids, because yeah, you yeah. can go from hiking and go through the mountains, go to the beaches and all that kind of stuff. But there's just this element of magic there at all times that people talk about. And the food, the food is great. People are lovely. Yeah. Jesus, I I, I think the touristy uh, department owes you a commission on that one. You sold that hard. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, now also, just for the record, the fastest way to make an 11 year old fall asleep is to take her on the tour of the Shakespeare Theater. She had zero interest. <laughs> yeah, the, the tour... <laughs> 
yeah, the tour guide was a little bland. He was a little bland, but I, you know, I'm falling in love with it. I'm madly in love with like, this is great. And, and she's like, wait, what? These people only paid a penny and then they had to go to the bathroom where they're standing while watching a play. I was like, well, yeah, that was kind of a thing. But I got, there's a cool story you can tell her about the Shakespeare's Globe. Okay. Did tell me. you know that uh, at one point during the, while they had it, it used to be the other side of the river. Yeah. So that's not the actual, right? Well, it kind of, so it used to be on the, well, yeah, they, they rebuilt it. Right. However, the original globe used to be the opposite side of the river. Okay. Until the landlord decided to keep upping the rent and then lock the doors on them because they weren't paying it. So they decided to take it down overnight and then build it on the other side of the river. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they just, on a boat, they, they took a boat, took it down piece by piece, took it across and then rebuilt it on the other side of the river. Wow, that's awesome. I will tell her. I'll tell her. You, you fell asleep during the best part. Here's the interesting. Yeah, that's a bit of a folklore story. I'm, I'm not sure gotcha. how. how uh, yeah, but it's a story you can tell her to make her be like, oh my God, they, they were rebels and cool. We just went from sleeping dragons and fairies to this folklore. I think we'll be okay. We'll be all right with the yeah, stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks, you need to check out Alan. Uh, you know, is there anything else coming up? I, you had a fun Instagram happening that, that went on. Uh, we're going to follow Alan underscore emery's I'll, I'll tag you of course on the social so guys oh, make it a little bit a little bit easier for you guys to follow him at least on instagram and what have you but but tell me about what happened here with the blue check mark and what what went down uh so um i sent okay so when when one of the first came out i made a bit of a uh a, a bit of a joke and sent a request for the whole blue tick on instagram and then they said no and i was like oh well what are, but then i put a story on my instagram and was like, I'm on Netflix and Instagram won't let me have a blue tick. And then I get a message from one of the guys who is in the, in the team working for, for the show. And he was like, we can help with that. I was like, oh, okay. I was, I was making a joke, but okay. And then he went away and asked Netflix for, for, um, for the whole blue tick thing for me, which I was, in, in, I just found it hilarious. But then he was like, we'll help with that. I'll go and ask. And then they came back and said, his account is not notable enough yet. However, once it is, talk with us again and we'll give him the blue tick. So I've got to get, I don't know, my account somehow has to become more notable, okay. whatever that means. And then I'll get a blue tick. I don't know okay. what the blue tick does, but it's, it's a fascinating <laughs> little thing. Apparently it gets you free coffee. I'll be happy with that. Oh, okay. Not too bad. Not bad. Um, I, I wonder if they do have a bait, like you need 15,000 followers, 500, fo you know, I'm wondering if they have like a standard number or activity. No, Cause I think, I think it's something to do. I don't know. Cause I know people with like a thousand followers who have mm -hmm. one and then people with like 300 followers who have one. And then people with like 45,000. I have a friend who's got like 50,000 followers and she doesn't have one. And I'm really? like, what, what is, well, how did they base this? It doesn't make any sense. Sure, sure. Interesting. Well, I'm going to throw on our story tomorrow. Just uh, became best friends with Alan Emery's We Need a Blue Tick. We'll see what happens. Let's see, we'll see what happens. See what You'll be so next. angry if we get one. You'll be so mad. I, like, okay. <laughs> if you get one before me, I'll be like, <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> All right. Before we get going, I, I want to wrap up with, with just asking how being an actor during this pandemic has gone for you. Have we doing a lot of self-tape auditions, a uh, virtual type of stuff? I mean, you and you couldn't have gone back to, you know, uh, serving pints and cocktails either because those places have mostly been closed, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I, one of the places I used to, to bartend closed down because of COVID. Mm. Um, because it's just because rent, people, bars aren't able, especially a lot of independent bars have to shut down because they weren't able to pay the rent on the buildings. Sure. Um, if, you're not got, if you've got four months of not making any money and then you've got four months of rent to pay, if you're an independent bar, it's not really feasible to, it's a lot of money. It ends up being like 15, 20 grand worth of pay. Mm -hmm. And it's not possible, um, especially if you had to pay your, your uh, employees as well. So yeah, all, all the bars I used to work as a cocktail bartender all shut down. Um, I now do a, help teach people how to make cocktails for, oh. in a cinema and I work as like a bartender there. But yeah, acting wise, it's been interesting. Like I've done quite, I've been quite lucky. Um, and I'm, I'm very, I'm aware of how incredibly lucky I've been. Um, I've got two jobs out of it. So nice. I've got two coming up. Um, obviously a, a lot of stuff isn't happening right now. I mean, a lot of shows have already been cast prior to lockdown. Um, mm -hmm. So now they're just bringing that cast back. There's going to be no new theater for a while. So things are, Things are slowly opening up, but from an actor's point of view, they're not open yet. So, so a lot, a lot of pre-production is going on right now. Um, but yeah, I'm lucky. Um, I've got a feature film. 
um, playing the lead in a feature, which I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about, but it's okay. being filmed in, in my home city of Cardiff, which is amazing because I get to go back to Wales to film. Um, nice. So it's a, an amazing story of, of redemption for between two characters. Um, uh, well, I, I'll talk about it. I, I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about it, but I'll say a bit. So, uh, yeah, we don't have a blue just, check mark. Nobody will know. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, so it's about um, an, uh, a guy who's who's come back from from traveling, and he's got some some very uh, weighty um, baggage with him that he has to take to uh, a girl um, uh, who's become agoraphobic and is trying to um, f help her overcome. Her, um, her her problems through guiding her through it and sort of uh, sharing their their shared pain in a way um, but it, it's all as much as it's it's such a heavy topic it's a very life reaffirming positive film which I'm really interested to to tackle something so deep and and and, and um, uh, painful for the characters but is done in a way that is to, is positive and life reaffirming so yeah i'm looking forward to that one nice. um the other one i definitely can't tell you very much about but okay. it's um it's filming in uh in i think it's i'll be in spain which is i'm really excited about it's my first period piece wow um but yeah that one that one there is nda has been signed and all that kind of stuff so i'm i'm really not allowed to discuss more about that one but that one i'm, I'm also really excited about very cool. Okay, so when those are allowed to be discussed and when the screener comes out, I hope you send it our way so we can review it ahead of time yeah. and, and push it even further. Um, listen, we do a uh, segment on our show called What's in the Glass? Whenever Tony and I have have a, a beer or a drink or something new that we try out, um, mm -hmm. we just kind of throw it on the show. Just like, hey, I just tried this beer. I just tried this, this scotch, whatever. Um, so we might need to get you to come back every now and then and kind of sponsor that segment since you are an oh, experienced yeah. drink maker. I'd love to do that. Come as on, long as there's rum. That's fine. Listen, you're in charge. It can be all yours. Rum, rum and beer are my thing. So yeah, I'll be happy to do that. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. All right, folks, follow Alan Emery. He's about to blow up even bigger than he already is. Um, listen, you can at least say you know him pre-blue checkmark. Please. Okay, <laughs> okay if, you, if you know him now. so cool. Uh, but go follow him. I know his Instagram is Alan underscore Emery's E M R Y S. And, and we'll tag you on all the stuff so that folks, it's easier for you to find. And we look forward to talking to you again and to seeing all this cool stuff that you got coming up, man. Thanks for coming on take two podcasts. No, thank you, man. Thank you.